Hey everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to make a quick uh, informational video about my new uh, product that I have, which I already love for Page with AFib, but it is a Cardio Mobile 6L. I have my own now and I really have enjoyed the product just outside of the box. And I just wanted to make sure you guys saw a little bit of a instructional video about how it works, how what it would be like if you had one, because I really think that this is the best product for somebody who, who has atrial fibrillation. It can really help a lot of people who have AFib. And if you have a CardioMobile 6L at home and it's, you have found it beneficial, put a few comments on the, uh, underneath this video so you can let other people know how much it has helped them. And if you're really interested in one, go ahead and click the link on this video uh, to get in, go ahead and get your own. Now the CardioMobile 6L, this is the box that it comes in. If you open it up, uh, you'll get a quick sort of uh, activation instructional guide over here. And this is the actual uh, device itself. You can see it right here. Uh, it is about the size of a, of a finger, a little bit bigger than a finger, but still small enough to easily fit inside of a wallet or in a purse, very easy to carry around in case you have any uh, sudden symptoms. Uh, first thing when you get this, uh, you go through the little uh, how-to guide here, and it'll show you how to uh, pair this device with your phone. Uh, basically, you download the Cardio app, and through the app, through Bluetooth, then connects to this sensor here, which is how you would ultimately transmit your signals over to your phone. And after I kind of show you a little bit of how it works, I'm also going to show you an uh, additional part of how it looks like on your phone. You can see actually the tracings of how it works and how it might be useful for yourself as well. Now, who do I think would be most beneficial for the Cardio Mobile 6L? I think personally it's most beneficial for people who have proxismal AFib who are not an AFib all the time. Uh, personally, if you're an AFib all the time, it's probably not the best tool for you, but for the grand majority of people who have AFib that comes and goes, it can be a very uh, good tool to have. Uh, one, uh, if you're having symptoms, you can check to see if your symptoms are due to AFib or if you're whether in normal rhythm. And this can be especially useful for people who have subtle symptoms and uh, you're not 100% sure if you're an AFib or not. This can give you, give a good distinguishing feature for a lot of people. Uh, it can also be good for people who are, don't really feel or know that they're AFib in case you want to try to track your AFib. You know, if you have done heart monitors in the past and it shows that you have had 5% AFib and you want to see if it progresses, you want to catch it before it starts getting worse, this can be a very useful thing. Do a tracing every day. Uh, if you start noticing that in your AFib a lot more frequently now, that may be a perfect time to go touch base with your doctor to see if there are changes needed in either your medication or whether you're a candidate for certain types of procedures. And so definitely can be useful for tracking of AFib as well for people who have uh, sudden symptoms as well. So the device itself, you saw it is about size, a little bit bigger than a finger. It has two electrodes right here. Here's one, here's the other one. And then there's a third one that's on the back. This is how they get the entire... Uh, six leads and having six leads look, means looking at your heart from six different angles. It really allows your doctor to see a little bit better what's going on and it improves the quality of the data that's given to your doctor. So again, I'm going to show you a little bit about how it gets positioned uh, and then I'll show you how it looks like on your phone as well. And so let me see if I can position this a little bit so you guys can see me. I'm going to back up a little bit here, see if you guys can just see me and see uh, when I'm sitting down in the chair. Uh, so these first two electrodes right here, they're where your thumbs would go, and you put them on your thumb just like that. Now the bottom electrode that's here in the bottom will then start to go and touch it to your leg. And so I'm wearing some shorts today. You can have it touch your knee like this, or even the top of your leg. If you weren't wearing something clothing covering, it does have to touch bare skin. So you can easily have it touch the top of your knee like that. Uh, if you're wearing pants, you can also have it on your ankle just, just like that as well. They do recommend that you have it on your left leg. And, and why is that? Uh, most likely because they want to mimic very crucial angles that are similar to what is done in an EKG inside of a doctor's office. You see, if you had an EKG done in a doctor's office, you see that there's multiple stickies that they have because they want to look at the electrical signal of the heart in multiple different angles. And some of the key angles are angles that go this way. The heart is actually on this side and the normal impulse goes from the top to the bottom kind of this way so you want to make sure you're catching angles going that way which would involve using your left leg not necessarily your right leg so the left leg is a crucial portion but it can be on your knee and it can be also be on your leg the device also has 
some sensors on it, and you'll see it when I'm showing the part on my phone. Uh, it can actually give you a little bit of feedback. Uh, you should be touching your leg uh, gently and having good contact with the, all the electrodes. But if you press too hard, it can actually affect the quality of the signal, and it'll kind of give you feedback that says you are touching it uh, too much. Uh, so you would hold this for about 30 seconds, and the device will give you an interpretation of what it sees, whether that you are in normal rhythm or whether you're in AFib. Another great thing about the 6L is that sometimes the device gives inconclusive readings. Uh, it may say it's something other than normal rhythm or AFib. Uh, it can say that you're just tachycardic. That means that your heart rate is going fast, but it doesn't quite fit the normal parameters of what it, the device itself would call AFib. Uh, it can also uh, give an unclassified reading, meaning it can't quite tell you for sure what it is. But the important thing is that with the multiple angles and the quality images that this device gives, your doctor should easily be able to tell you whether the signal is abnormal or not. So let's go ahead and start a tracing, and I'm going to show you on my phone what happens when you actually start a tracing. And again, if you've had a cardiac mobile 6L and you found it great, put a comment underneath this video. And if you're interested in getting one yourself, go ahead and click the link in this video. So this is your home screen that you start off with. Uh, I already formed an account on my Cardia app. And in order to start reading an EKG, you go ahead and press record your EKG. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my fingers and on the electrode and touch it to my left leg. Push down a little bit until it starts seeing the initializing. And there is my heartbeat. And you're seeing it in six different angles. Uh, I might be moving around a little bit because I'm trying to talk during the video, but in general, as still as you can be, will provide the device to provide the most cleanest tracing possible so that your doctor can see what's going on. And in general, this six lead is very impressive. I mean, the, the quality of the interpret of the tracing is so good. Even if the machine is unable to tell you exactly what is going on, your doctor should be able to know what is happening. So it asks you if you recorded this EKG. Yes, it was me. And there was my current tracing came back as normal. Uh, but it also has all these different features. It allows uh, a clinician review, which you can have a cardiologist, which is contracted by Cardia to review the, the EKG. But more importantly, you can share it as a PDF. And uh, you would have to put in your password there, but then it will come in as a PDF, which you can either save, just like you see right here. Nice, beautiful uh, tracing of the, uh, the tracing that I just did. You can save it, or you can also email it or upload it to a patient portal that you have at your doctor's office. So overall, this is a very impressive device, and I've been very impressed with the ability to be able to use it myself. 